You ever seen the Scream movies? Well, Scream 4 was being shot in Michigan and I was hired as a security guard when I was 17. At that time, I couldn't have done shit to block anybody from doing anything, from getting into the machinery or to getting into the trailers. If some big dude came in and tried to get in, I couldn't do anything. We didn't have tasers, we didn't have guns, we didn't have a phone to call anybody, so I really don't know what I would have would have done. That was my first like real job. I got paid under the table. I was I wasn't even 18. It was illegal. <laughs> I was a host at this Italian restaurant called Olive Garden. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or not, but you get free unlimited breadsticks and I had my fair share of unlimited breadsticks and it definitely did not help me being any more healthy than I was trying to be. I also had my real first racist experience when I was at Olive Garden as a host. Some guy threatened to call the CIA on me, but that's a story for another time. I worked at Outback Steakhouse as a takeout server and it sucked. I would package up foods for people that would call in or come in through the drive-through and it was a horrible job and not a lot of pay, not a lot of tips. I actually ended up getting fired from that job because I thought it was more important to hang out with this girl who would end up being my girlfriend for two years as opposed to going into a Friday rush. I was in love, I was love drunk, I was hit by Cupid's arrow. I'm glad I made that choice. I also worked at Victoria's Secret for a month. That job was horrible. I'd have to come in at 6 a.m., stock these bras and panties that I have to open up out of this box. They smelled like cardboard, and I was working with these really, really crabby girls in the morning. I was trying to make jokes, I was trying to have a good time, and like, I mean, at 6 a.m., nobody's having it. I worked at Chipotle as a dishwasher and as a cook. I would cook up the steak. I got a lot of free Chipotle, that was awesome. I'd have to take heaps of wet food and clean it and throw it in the garbage. I worked at my university as the student body vice president. I represented 20,000 students. That was an amazing job. I had a team of 20 plus legislators and an executive board and did a lot of amazing things that year and made a lot of cool friends. I was a leadership consultant at my university, so I'd go into different organizations and teach them about leadership. At my university, I was part of the programming board and I was the diversity chair, so I'd put on like events that promoted diversity in the university. Like I remember I put together this event called Arabian Nights. We had a thousand people show up, uh, belly dancing, food, it was amazing. It's probably one of the most unique jobs I've ever had in my life because I got to travel in college to places like Disney, Montreal, New York, Boston, all with a group of really good people. When I lived in Pittsburgh, I worked for a company called GTEC Strategies. I think they have a different name now. And it was the pivotal point in my life that changed the trajectory of my professional life forever. But what we would do is we would work with blighted communities in the Pittsburgh area and teach key community members the legal and creative aspects of turning vacant lots into community spaces. So we would take these vacant lots that were in the communities, figure out what we could do with them, and then in the summertime with the community members, we transformed these lots into parks, gardens, meadows. It was amazing because I got to spend every single day doing creative work, thinking of how to change communities, being in the dirt, lifting rocks, planting seeds and plants and trees, digging holes, working with community members who have lived in their communities and seen those communities fall. And now that they get to be a part of this effort to turn their lots into something beautiful, it was really amazing to see what can manifest in the community and what kind of attitudes people can have uh, when they see positive things happening. I worked as a barista in a coffee shop in my hometown. I did landscaping for a little bit. That wasn't really that fun. I was at a point where I was unemployed and that was kind of like a side gig I was trying to do and just to make a little bit of money and seeing my friends and my colleagues that were making a lot of money in careers that they had chosen out of college that was uh, tough mentally. I also worked for this organization called Excellent Schools Detroit to help launch one of their pilot programs uh, to create this common application system for high schools in the city. I also worked at a chandelier store on 8 Mile. I learned the difference between a real crystal and a fake crystal on a chandelier. I think that if you hold the diamond up to a light and you can see the rainbow, then it's real. If you can't, then it's fake or vice versa. I'm not really sure. 
I was an English teacher in Turkey for a little while. I had traveled there with a cohort of people and I taught English to small kids and I actually taught English to some really big business owners, some of the biggest business owners in the country. That was a wild experience and something I'll never forget. I also worked at an incubator, a business incubator. My job was to establish that incubator as an international landing zone so that companies coming from out of the state or out of the country would be attracted to wanting to land at that incubator. I was a performer at the Michigan Renaissance Festival so I was one of those people that would interact with you on the streets of the festival, uh, just messing with you and playing games. And it was really fun because it was improv and in character all day long in the beating sun. And there was something really rewarding about being able to make people smile and being able to just interact with anybody that you, you came across. Also the space behind me, it's Think Detroit. I started Think Detroit as a co-working space for neighborhood users, so specific, specifically people that can't afford to be in co-working spaces that are downtown Detroit or midtown Detroit. I also started a real estate investment company with my dad, so we would buy up blighted homes in Detroit and rehab them and then rent them out. So we have a portfolio of homes that we uh, have rehabbed and that was a, has been a great experience because I've uh, learned how to work with contractors, uh, the ins and outs of repairing a home, and what it, what home ownership like really means, and the taxes and everything else that comes with uh, having rental properties. I worked for a company called WeWork. It's one of the biggest co-working spaces in the world, and I helped open one of the Detroit locations, which is like right downtown. And I was a community manager there for a little while. That was an amazing experience being able to bring in these large and small companies from you know all around the country and all around the city. I worked as a Lyft driver for a little bit just to make some cash on the side. That was really interesting and also if you have a leased car uh, the miles you put on when you're when you're a Lyft driver or Uber driver uh, isn't really worth it. I started a nonprofit called Research Detroit where we would take vacant and blighted property, turn it into community space. Uh, one of the big projects I did was turn a uh, recycled shipping container into a off the grid greenhouse. So it's like solar powered and the goal it was to turn it into a space that would teach veterans and youth agricultural skills. Uh, I'll have a link in the description about the organization and the projects that I've done. Check it out. All right, so there's three more jobs that I totally forgot to touch on. Uh, one is modeling. I've been paid to model, uh, whether it's for an editorial uh, or for a magazine or apparel company or whatever. And I've been paid in, uh, <laughs> I've been paid in money. I've been paid in uh, apparel and bags and just various things. Uh, second, I've been paid for my photography for portraits or I've shot for different brands. So I've been paid for that. That's another job. And the third is consulting. I've consulted for some nonprofit work before and I've been paid for that as well. So that's three jobs right there. And now finally, my current job is working for the state of Michigan as a business development project manager, uh, managing you know economic development projects in Wayne County. It's an amazing job. It's in line with you know where I want to head in my future. And I, I think it's important to touch on how all the jobs that I've ever had, no matter how numerous they are, have all been for a purpose. Every job I've ever had has taught me how to interact with different populations of people, different kinds of people, to be able to handle stresses in different environments and to learn from them and to be able to adapt quickly. I think that you know our generation or my generation, millennials and Generation Z are more uh, keen to want to try new opportunities and to to pursue these different paths because you have the available options to do so. That's why the gig economy is growing so much. That's why people are uh, doing things like Uber or Shipt or whatever. You know. So if I was to ever give any advice. Of, about, to anyone about their careers, I would say that it's really important to be able to work in different environments so that you can learn different skills that allow you to be more robust in your, in your career path or just in life in general. I feel like I'm able to relate with a lot of different people because of the different backgrounds uh, and the different jobs that I've had. And so I'm gonna end it there. Those are all the jobs that I've ever had. Don't ever feel discouraged because you're working all these different jobs um, to get money. I've been there 
don't feel discouraged that you know you're you're not doing the job that you want to be doing at the moment because you you can create opportunities for yourself. I went down the entrepreneurial path. You know, I started a few companies in a non nonprofit. The, if I had not created those opportunities for myself, I wouldn't be in the position I am now. And if I never had those other small jobs that you know aren't really small, like working at a restaurant or uh, doing landscaping or whatever, I, I feel like I wouldn't have the people skills necessary to to be where I'm at right now. I hope you all have a great day. See you in the next video.